You excited? I'm getting excited. Mm, that's not good. Alpheus, buy your own. Alpheus. Yes? You were 20 days past your deadline for this quarter's tribute. Your collector has transferred your case to the Roman office. Are you able to pay your tribute penalty now? I filed an extension in the month I'll of... Take that as a no. By decree, appoint this honorable praetor of Capernaum. I will remand you into custody. I'm very sorry. I didn't realize. Turn around. Sir, I didn't realize. May I request an extension of First century days? handcuffs. Ah. Ah. Not good. Ah. Mm. Who is it? Everything's fine, Elisheba. Please, I beg you. <laughs> And then I have... He's not here. I can settle this, Lucius. There's actually been a mistake. I'm, I'm in it right now. I'm But this intense. is 24 AD. So this oh, is Oh, I didn't even recognize that. Yeah, this oh. is before... See, I was reading. Comes to you, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing that so out. So this is the backstory <laughs> okay. on his family. But Oof. does that mean he sent... Roman soldiers to his dad's house? Ugh. I'm Sam, a Messianic worship pastor. This is Dr. Tom, a Messianic theologian. And we're gonna react to the chosen from a biblical Messianic worldview. First, the shame of your choice. And now, you're actually my collector. It's his dad. Whoa. Not you? What are you doing here? Your son is our Publicanus. They called him Publicanus, the publican. Oh, that's the Latin. Latin? I don't know. Sounds Latin, but tax collector. Huh? Publicanus. Yeah. Wow, that's intense. That's really intense. What? I, mm. Getting his dad almost arrested. The whole thing, like, oof. I mean, but then he's showing up so that he doesn't. I'm kind of confused. Yeah, I'm a little confused too. I mean, Why did he send him there then? I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll find out. Yeah. I will no longer protect you. I don't want your protection. And you have 24 hours, Abba. Don't call me Abba. Your face, please. What? Ellie, cover the windows. Put on your veil. We will sit Shiva for seven days. So sitting Shiva, he's saying that he is dead, dead to their to family. He doesn't want to be their father, his father anymore. So wow. they're going to act as if he actually died. Right. So actually, I've heard stories even today Whew. about... Uh, Jewish people who they've accepted Yeshua as their mm -hmm. Messiah yeah. and their family was so angry hmm. that they did something similar where wow. they treated them as if they were dead and they had a, a you know almost like a mock burial or wow. sitting Shiva here so this this is something that happens to uh, in history so betrayal becomes almost equivalent to death at that point, where it's yeah. like, you, you've betrayed us so much, and mm -hmm. that's what they're feeling. You've betrayed us so much that we're done. You're yeah. dead to us. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whomever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. We just picked up from the end of season two. Wow. You know how I could tell? <laughs> the sash. <laughs> <clears throat> no, the words oh, of Yeshua. Oh, 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 the words of Yeshua. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, hmm. and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. Hmm. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Wow. Mm. They're just getting right after yeah, it. Yeah, they are. Wow. Our good friend Rich Cleary yeah. pointed out on this passage, I'll never forget this. He's saying that, so the altar is in Jerusalem, right? Right. And Yeshua did most of his teaching in the Galilee. Mm -hmm. So he, he imagined this scenario as, hey, you're, you're in Jerusalem. You journeyed all the way down to Jerusalem. You're bringing your sacrifice. And then yeah. Yeshua is saying, I want you to leave Jerusalem and walk mm -hmm. all the way back to the Galilee. Which is what? How many miles approximately? What do you think? It's a couple days walk. Yeah, a couple days walk. Yeah, a three-day walk or something like that. And go make right with your brother before you walk and three days back and, and offer your gift. And then walk three days back again, right? <laughs> right. So, I mean, this was not just a, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and give him a call up and make it right. Yes. You know, I mean, he's, this is serious, even financial, mm -hmm. and time and, and energy. I mean, this was a, 
a real, they would scream to them yeah. that he was really serious about restoration. And this is what he's doing with the Sermon on the Mount. He's drilling down right. into the heart of these issues. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what else is coming next, but well, yeah, you do. I mean, well, I mean <laughs> <laughs> you wait a minute. You haven't read the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> But that's like, I don't know what they're going to portray next. <laughs> but yeah, like he's, he's just drilling down into the yeah. commands. He's getting after yeah. the heart. Do not be anxious about your life. Mm. What you will eat or what you will drink. Nor about your body. What you will put on. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothing. It's a good visual here. So look at the crowd. Yeah. And just realize these are day laborers. Mm. These people are not working today. Right. Right. They're listening instead. And mm -hmm. they're saying, he's saying, don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like, <laughs> yep. they've sacrificed that mm. day. I mean, we have no concept no. of this daily bread reality. Right that he's talking about. But look, I mean, they they are in it right now. I mean, they are listening. They're like, that's why we're here. And he right. is, he's telling them, don't worry. Like, God's going to take care of you. Right. He's going to provide. The sacrifice is worth it, even, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I just think that's a, it's, it's such a good, it's a good visual. Bring you in and realize, oh, because yeah. we read it, you know, 2,000 years yeah. later, it feels a little bit different. But. We read it, we read it with food in the fridge sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? It's and like, it means, that's the amazing thing. It means mm -hmm. all of that at once. It means yeah. so much to us as well. For sure. Like, that's why that's why this teaching, this one right here that we're listening to, it like it, it transcends centuries. Centuries. It's like it's yeah. still applicable right now, yeah. just as much as it was then. Yeah. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Mm. And which of you, by mm. being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Mm. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things. I prefer pagans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. As a Gentile. No, I think it's I think it's a it's funny, but I think it's a good distinction because yeah. he means pagans. He does. There. Yeah. yeah. And so and sometimes people don't like the translation of Gentiles or because they say, Oh, Gentiles are pagans. It's like well, a lot of them were. Most yeah, of them were, right. you know, but that's where this is all beginning to shake the earth, you mm -hmm. know, is that this Jewish faith is gonna Yes. Go to the four corners. Exactly. But I, I'm with you. I right. think pagans is a better translation mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. uh, because, if nothing else, I'm a Gentile. You right. know, he's not putting down all people exactly. from the nation. That's the point there. Right. That's he's, the point. He's just saying no, people that don't love God. Right. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. And if anyone should slap you on your right cheek, turn and give him the other one also. It's a good pause to reflect on the oral culture. They were used to like remembering hmm. what people would say. And it's good. Totally different culture than ours, because you're right. like. Right. I'm like, where's my phone notes? Right. You know? <laughs> and also, they would be really quiet hmm. so they could hear each other. Wow. I mean, there are stories even of just. Um, in early American history of mm -hmm. the different traveling preachers and they would come mm. into town and there would be hundreds and even sometimes thousands that would gather and it would yeah. just be a, a hush wow. whisper, right? Because there's no microphones. Right, right. There's no, it's like just quiet as wow. a mouse, you know? You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Because you're talking about oral culture. I was imagining like just these words being spoken into right. the earth mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. going forth. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just like see, like even in it's my like, imagination, just like seeing these like reverberations mm -hmm. just echoing. 
and they're still echoing. It's good. You know Ooh, what I mean? Wow. It's like they're still reverberating it's the good. words that he spoke. I like to say it's like a, a summary of all of Yeshua's teaching in right. some sense, right? right? It's like it's the succinct, yeah. it's his Torah, it's his mm -hmm. instruction. Mm -hmm. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock mm. yeah that's so good that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that was awesome wow that's so good man mm. can you imagine no it began a, a revolution and it just this little side of the hill in, yeah. in Galilee. Yeah. I mean, right. that the, even that that's the way he chose to do it is so humbling, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I guess, counterintuitive, mm -hmm. you know? Right. As opposed to, like, riding it and sending it out by horse to the four corners or something. Yeah. Like, he just, like you were saying, mm -hmm. went straight in here. And, mm -hmm. like, he who has an ear, let him hear, right? Wow. I mean, wow! It doesn't, it doesn't force anything. Yeah, and yet the the power of the words echoes through the ages. If I hear anything like that, well, not that kind of authority. He spoke with actual authority, his own, not from someone else. Yes, almost above the law. Consider the lilies, he said. How they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon and all was not Lord. like one of these. <laughs> mm. Is that oral tradition that you're talking about? They're repeating it as they go. I like what Dallas Willard says about the, the Sermon on the Mount in particular. Mm. There's this greater availability. Mm, yeah. There's this greater access right. to the kingdom. Like right. the kingdom came in the form of a man. Yeah. And like you were saying, demonstrated the mm -hmm. kingdom, mm -hmm. taught us about the kingdom, yeah. empowered us yes. with the Holy Spirit, you know? Mm. So to me, this is... And it's all in this moment, you know, because at the end of this teaching, it actually says, and the crowds were astounded. Yeah. I love that word in English. Astounded. astounded. <laughs> they were like, nobody teaches right. with this type of authority. Yeah. Man, so far so good. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Judas! I died. I lost you. Did you find those guys? with his followers. Could you see the look on people's faces? I've never seen a crowd so moved. They turn the other cheek and lay up your treasures to heaven. Business was a little naive, but this <laughs> has talent. No, oh, I've never seen anything like it. Could you imagine if he sold for us? Oh, Dad. Why didn't they take up a collection? They could be living like kings. <laughs> I'm going with them. Mm -hmm. What? I'm leaving. I quit. I'm going with his followers. Where? I don't know. <laughs> To the ends of the earth. Everywhere this message needs to be heard. I'll sue you. I renounce my shares. Then I'll sue him. <laughs> there is nothing you could take from him that would be of any value to you. He doesn't have anything. <laughs> what does he have to give you then? I'll sue you. <laughs> Sounds like arrogant. Right. It's really funny scene. It's also a good depiction of where people just gather and not everybody hears. Not everybody hears the same thing, for sure. I mean, they hear it. Right. They heard, they heard the words, but they didn't hear the spirit. Right. That's a good example of the spirit on the words. They were yep. not able to, to receive yeah. the spirit of the message. Which which again, you said it earlier, but he who has an ear, let him hear. And right. Yeshua said that all the time. Right. And you're seeing one who had an ear to hear mm -hmm. and one who didn't. Right. Right. Oh, that, that business about this and that and the other was a little naive, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> right? It's like, no ear to hear. <laughs> <laughs> that still happens today. Well, 
My thoughts exactly. See you in the morning then, for I report to Quintus. <laughs> I think he's resting, right? I think he's not talking because he's like, there's something going on. Yeah. <laughs> now, the one thing they did miss is that he wa Yeshua was seated when he gave the teaching. You think so? That's what it says. It does, in the beginning of the text, it yeah. does. You're right. I, well, he I mean, maybe he, maybe he stood up, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> You're right. I, 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 yeah. They kind of turned it into like a, a little bit more of a an excitement like right a, right right you know. and i don't know that it matters right i recognize some of them from my studies of the teachings of rabbi hillel it's very good matthew when you said to be reconciled to your brother can you elaborate on matthew. that so he said he recognized his teachings from rabbi hillel so yeah. rabbi hillel is one of the first century uh contemporaries a little bit earlier but not too much mm -hmm. of yeshua who was really famous in in this period of time so i'm i'm surprised that the tax collector knew about Rabbi Hillel's teaching, mm -hmm. but uh, that's surprising. Yeah. But but he's right. It's interesting because a lot of Yeshua's teachings weren't necessarily even new. Hmm. But I mean, it, he did have new things, but it's kind of like he would take it a little like to the mm. next level. Okay. Yeah. But he often weighed in with a similar perspective of uh, Rabbi Hillel yeah. versus Rabbi Shammai, which they kind of portrayed mm -hmm. some of this in the earlier seasons. Yeah, with. I'm Judas. Of Keriot. Shalom, Judas. Shalom. I saw you before I stepped out to talk to the people. And then I noticed you listening very intently during my sermon. It was wonderful. Thank you. And then Nathaniel briefly told me how you gave us help and how you might be interested in joining us. He's not easy to impress. Ah. I attended Bet Midrash, but. My father passed away before I could pursue a rabbi, so I stayed home to work. He said he studied at Bet Midrash. Yeah. It means house of study. Okay. So he said he grew up studying, but then mm -hmm. his dad died, so he had to work, so he couldn't continue his studies, right. essentially. So right. he's like, I'm a learned man, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> like, I've got some teaching in yeah. me. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm on. I'm with you. So he, but he's he's saying he's one. He's wanting to come under him as a rabbi. Right. Is what he's saying. Exactly. Yeah. Are you ready to do hard things? I believe you are going to change the world. Hmm. And I want to be a part of that. I'm willing to make sacrifices, and I have. I am accustomed to loss. So yes. Yes. I'm ready to do hard things. I will see. Did he say we'll see? The cost of discipleship. Wow. Huh? So. Well. We will see. Well, gosh. That was like, that was painful. Man. Oh. They're portraying him like he knows already. That's what that felt like. That was like you a, could argue that for sure. I know, but I was yeah. like, "Wow, wow, wow, wow!" Are you ready to do hard things? It's like I, he's presenting them, pre presenting him with the cost of discipleship up front. Yeah, almost like like you're saying, like he can, he's picking up on something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was a painful. That was painful. Barnaby Shula, come on in. Uh, did you approve of the sermon? A little long. <laughs> it was wonderful. A little long. Well, you all did your part in spreading the word, which is vital to our ministry. And let's especially thank Nathaniel, Thad, and Little James for their part in getting us the land and setting this up so quickly. And I know you'll That's all have them clean up before you go. And I also have a quick announcement to make. Your Hold favorite. The phone. Your favorite. Hold the phone. Your, your favorite. <laughs> They're the, turning this into like a service. May you may or may not know this about me, but I'm a I'm kind of an announcements oh. junkie. So <laughs> No you're not. I love announcements. No, you don't. I do. I, I mean I I think announcements are important. Mm. And how to do it is important. You are good at that sort of <laughs> administrative reality. So uh, he's his own. Keep people informed. That, that's true. That's true. 
he is his, his own, own admin. administrator. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like, uh, first on the announcements this morning, uh, women and it's children true. will be dismissed. Right. At, you know, It's true. He has to take care of the, the lodging, uh-huh. the food, <laughs> you know, feeding the 5,000. Like, he's everything. Like, she you know, was like, you feed him. Right. You know? <laughs> it's amazing because he's, no matter who you are in your gift set, you're like, she was your model there. You exactly. Know? <laughs> exactly. Even in announcements. Even in announcements, guy. Let's see how he does. Thank you, announcements, guy. Now... So my student here does not grind his teeth into dust. Is John even able to receive visitors at the moment? Are you coming to my cars? No, I won't be taking some time alone. But if you were able to somehow arrange for Andrew here to safely visit John, I don't, I don't know if that's possible. I suppose that I can make some arrangements. Macaris is a location. They actually know where it is. Oh yeah, it's they've. They've dug archaeologically there, mm-hmm. and it, it's first century. They found the court. They found the area where they even think really? where it like this discussion took place. Where uh, not this discussion, mm-hmm. but the one when um, Salome was dancing. Oh and then, wow! Like, I mean, maybe they'll show it later. Right? But, uh, yeah, it's like on the other side of the Dead Sea, like the eastern side, okay. in modern day Jordan. Jordan. Okay, and so. Yeah, just a, it's a one of those hmm. one of those archaeological finds that proves the wow. authenticity of scripture. That. Yeah, it's that's pretty cool. So there, there. This is this is this is the gal that was had a husband that served in Herod's court, right? And it's biblical that she supported yeah. Jesus' ministry, right? Yeah. One of his supporters, yeah, yeah. financial yeah. supporters, right? So. Even 2,000 years ago, they needed financial <laughs> supporters. So this is a good segue, right? <laughs> to say, hey, we would love your support. Uh, and also you can support Grafted You. So we've launched an online Messianic Bible school, uh, and we love your support so we can take the school to the next level. Wow. And you could support others who want to take the courses. So support Grafted You, support Grafted uh, check out the link in the description below. Thank you. For what? For watching out for me. For everyone. Always have. You're a great leader. Mm. And I don't say it enough. So. Thank you. I'll say shalom to John for me. Really? Yeah, I mean it. He started all this, introducing you to Jesus, and you introduced me to him. I thank John, and I thank you. I love him. Mm. Shalom, man. I love you. Shalom. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was nice. That was beautiful. That 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 kind of got got me for clamp there. Reminds me of my brother. Yeah. yeah. Helping me out. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Love you, Paul. Really, without For Paul, sure. I right? wouldn't be in the Messianic Jewish movement. Right. So, right. yeah. That's like, that's so good. Feel that one. It's like we all have someone, right? And numerous someone. Numerous someone's, <laughs> for sure. To help us get to where we are. For sure. And our understanding and our relationship with the Lord. Yesterday, I saw a sermon by a rogue preacher. I haven't slept since. He was brilliant. Intriguing. Is it to be a historical record? A letter? Are you filing charges? No, I... I don't know what I'm writing yet, or who I will send it to. I am certain I must document what I am seeing. Hmm. How about Yusuf? I have a safe that I use. I call it the cellar. It's where documents go. Cool off. You can't imagine how many times our brothers write something they wish they had not sent in the morning. Other documents remain for months. It's locked and... um, entirely confidential. Does this sound like a place you might want to store your document? I bet the goodbyes were very hard for those you served with, Jairus. Thank you. 
That was interesting. It was a, it was a unique scene. Introducing some new characters. It sounds like they sent Jairus to like take care of business. Taking care of business. So. Every day. <laughs> well. Yeah, sorry. I think, yeah, it'll be interesting to see his transformation. Right. I mean, I'm just guessing. Right. I don't really know. We'll see what happens. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Hashtag spoiler alert. That's an interesting way to portray him, though. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting that. And then right. I, to see the synagogue, or no, the rabbi interested in Yeshua's teaching and kind of excited about mm -hmm. it. Like, that's a... Uh, it's a unique perspective. I like that. I like it too. Well, there were definitely like a lot, I mean, lots and lots and lots of people that followed him. For sure. So lots of different kinds of people that followed him. Exactly. So yeah. I I like I like the the plot right. thickening here. It's yeah. it's kind of fun. Why are you in such a rush anyway? Come on. You don't know? What? John, I wake up every morning and after every nap, having dreamt about just one thing. You're going to tell me what I'll bet? He must cinnamon cakes. Sounds about right. And you don't? Mm, well, there are the teachings <laughs> and the sermon we just heard. Have you not seen the miracles he's been performing? Paralytics getting up and walking? I know. It makes me so hungry. <laughs> Come on. We're so close. That was awesome. <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons we love The Chosen's portrayal of, you know, yeah, The Chosen Disciples. Right. Is the humanity. For sure. I mean, this is just pure humanity, yeah. right? They had hilarious personalities or right. weird person, you know, quirky. Yeah. So they're just bringing it all out. And, you know, let's be honest, they got hungry. Right. And they were and probably hangry. Exactly. <laughs> He's definitely getting hangry right? at this point. Right. The prophecies of Isaiah. He has been sent to proclaim liberty to the captives. And what? The opening of the prison to those who are bound. Mm. His prison is nothing now that he is here. Mm. Do you believe that? I, I'm trying. Andrew, in all that he said to those thousands of people, there was something just for you. For what you are going through. Mm -hmm. There always is. What was it? Something that stuck with you. Don't be anxious. Can, can you add a single hour to your life by being anxious? That sounds like him. What else? But seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Even more like him. So if you want to help me, Andrew, if you want to help me, listen to him. Go home and do what he says. Whew, that was so good. Well, you know how much I love John, mm -hmm. so. It's just like, <clears throat> that was, mm. what does John do every time? He's just like, points him to Yeshua. Exactly. Shore. Points him to Yeshua. Exactly. Points him to Yeshua. Yeah. My but, mind went right to John 3 where he says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Mm -hmm. They're portraying it so well that he's saying like, his, my joy is that he be, mm -hmm. he be highlighted, right? right? And so yeah. pointing, 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 pointing. Mm -hmm. I love it. They're setting it up well for, I mean, him being in prison and, and he kind of has this moment of testing later where he's like, sends his disciples mm -hmm. and is like, are you, are you the one? Right. And she was saying yes, but John doesn't get out of his prison, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's this hour of testing mm -hmm. for John. And I don't know, there's, if, if they portray it, they're setting it up well. Judas, this is dangerous. Yes. Rome does not like popular preachers with big followings. They put them away. I think he's the Messiah. Mm. I am almost <laughs> sure of it. Many have claimed to be the Messiah. You know what happens to them? Always the worst case scenario with you. You know, their followers aren't always killed. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. It's wow. very reassuring for his sister. If he is the anointed one, sister, 
then he will not be killed. Hmm. He will defeat the Romans and set us all free. Hmm. So, did you hear what he said? Not all that part? And what he was of his saying. followers be killed? Or, or what, what? So he was saying, if he's the Messiah, he, oh, yeah. he won't be killed. Right. He'll defeat, He'll defeat the Rome. Romans. Right. Yeah. So, that's... They're setting it up for, hey, that's what he struggles with mm -hmm. in that he didn't meet the expectations right. Right. of what he thought the Messiah should look like. Right. Which was the common expectation. For sure. Right? And, uh, We've and, talked about that numerous times right. here. But, yeah. but they're just they're, they're saying it and that he's mm -hmm. going to struggle with that, which right. is why some people think that Judas, uh, they're not portraying him as a, a zealot. But oh, but right. that understanding mm -hmm. of the zealots was that we need to overthrow, overthrow Rome, and right. God will bless us in that. Just mm -hmm. like the Maccabees overthrew the Greeks, right. the Seleucids, you know. So and maybe we'll see Simon, the other Simon, Simon the Zealot, struggle with that more too. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, cause cause they, we, they developed him as a zealot pretty well. Yeah, early in, in second season or something. So well, it's his last name actually, <laughs> <laughs> and his middle name is. <laughs> <The> <laughs> <laughs> and John, the Baptist. And yeah. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. I said awful things to you because I was scared and you didn't deserve it. And I'm, I am, I'm, I'm very sorry. So, uh, that, that's all. That's it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure what to say. I think this is the first time anyone has ever said sorry to me. Hmm. Mary, you don't deserve that either. Things are better now, huh? Yes. <laughs> A lot. Huh? Thank you for this. Shalom. Shalom. It's so powerful. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Repentance and forgiveness. It's like, yeah. especially, I mean, for thousands of years, obviously, for, <laughs> since the beginning. Mm -hmm. But like today, it's like we live in this cancel culture. Mm. And there's no forgiveness. Right. Right. There's no restitution. There's no way back. No reconciliation. When you yeah. screw up. It's just, you're done. That's it. Yeah. And it's like... That's not the kingdom. No. I mean, it's mm. like, it's so beautiful. Mm. And you know how it is when, like, somebody... You know, it's really humbling to say you're sorry. For sure. But then what happens is, is that, like... Instead of looking down on that person, like, oh, they messed up. Then you're like, wow. Right. Like, they're amazing. <laughs> they yeah. owned up to their mistake right. and said they were sorry. And then all of a sudden you have, you have like more trust for the person hmm. because they actually apologize. Hmm. You'd think you would have less trust because they admitted they were wrong, right. like in the natural right. mind. Right. But that's not what happens. You're hmm. like, wow, he just admitted his sin. Yeah. And now I actually trust him more because if... If you're somebody who will admit your sin, mm -hmm. then I can trust you're not hiding, hiding it. Yep, yep. I mean, it's amazing power. It's true. Of the gospel. It's true. And of, you know, the power of forgiveness yeah. of, from Yeshua's blood. And it's like, oh. wow, it just does so much. We're seeing the disciples starting to put yeah. the teaching into practice. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. And it's like... And it's affecting relationships. It's affecting relationships. It's not it's just their, lives. their relationship yeah. with Yeshua. It's exactly. like now it's starting to yeah. ripple effect. Right. Like almost like a, well, maybe I would compare it to like a mustard seed or something. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit of leaven. <laughs> His pup. <laughs> oh, 
Auf Wiedersehen. Son. Oh. Can feel that one. Oh, oh man, the power of forgiveness. Like right, that. right. Oh, oh, man. Got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh, man. Oh, that's so good. Yes. Right? Amen. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, the power of forgiveness changes. Literally everything. everything. Changes everything. Changes everything. Hey Grafted family, Dr. Tom here. I'm excited to tell you about the launch of Grafted U. We are offering an online class titled Introduction to a Biblical Messianic Worldview. Over five weeks, I'm going to be your professor and you're going to discover that Messianic theology is embedded in story this epic story of the good news of the kingdom. By the end of the class, you're gonna be able to understand the big picture of the biblical story. You're gonna be able to see where we've come from, where we're going, and what still needs to happen to get to the return of King Jesus. We will send you two videos each week, plus we'll have a live class each Tuesday. Sign up today for the class to go deeper in your understanding of God and the Bible and build a biblical messianic worldview. Wow. And <laughs> is there he biblical Hebrew for round of applause? Mm, I don't think so. You can just give him a hand. I wonder if somebody did a PhD dissertation on the origin of clap offering. If you have, <laughs> please comment. comment.